Well, this is a uh, first for me, but yeah, I may be new to YouTube, kind of. But uh, you know, for any of you watching out there, which is probably no one, but I've gotten requested on Deviant Art to well write for someone. So I was kind of hoping to put a well, kind of read it out loud and get critical critically reviewed on it, so here we go. Nature's Protector, written by, and this is obviously my username, I'll give out my name to random people now, Lucaro Dragnoot, idea and request of the username Heavier Lobster. So far I've only got six chapters done, so I'll just go ahead and just read those. Chapter 1, Contracting Demise. Hurry up, we're not on a nature hike. We need to get we need to set up the tent by nightfall. I sighed, jogging up beside my friend Nathan as we continued the camp. You really are missing out. It's beautiful in here, I reply. Trying to get him to realize that nature is it just has its own charm. Yeah, beauty no one has time for. Now come on! He answers back, both him and I staying silent the rest of the time. As we reach the camp I set up the tent while he gets firewood. When I finish with this tent, yeah, because it, it it just finishes itself for whatever reason. I gotta help him collect more wood and make a rotisserie style cooker. Because I mean, he's not gonna collect enough for that. Come on now. And then I know enough that I had make campsites to make a table and chairs. Very crude, but you know. as the sun starts to go down, I set the fire pit. Adding a wall of rocks on the outside to make sure we don't start a forest fire. You worry too much, man. Nothing bad's going to happen. Nathan proclaims, blissfully unaware of everything that could indeed happen. Including the occurrences from the news lately. In fact, Nathan... Had Nathan not been begging my and his parents for months, we wouldn't be here. It's safe to say I'm extremely irate with him already. I just hope nothing gets wrong. I'm not going to take my chances and risk burning to death in a forest fire. Unless you'd rather not have a fire. I reply, my tongue sharpened without a razor now. What the hell did I do? Nathan asks, now worked up himself. You were entirely unaware of the dangers in a, of camping in a forest that is protected as a nature reserve. The rocks will keep the fire from spreading too far. I was going slowly, watching for venomous snakes while you ran on ahead. And if that weren't enough, you were loud enough to be heard a mile away, and you possibly attracted wolves to our present location. You are making a contract with demise, unaware the result will always be death. You cannot cheat death! I reply. In this, just pouring all my worries and fears on this trip, save the one that I don't want to talk about. In that response, as those were, unavoid were avoidable, or they have been avoided. Now, let's eat. I state calmly, preparing the rotisserie style steak with fire roast potatoes and some ranch to dip them in, and a Caesar salad. Once everything is ready, I serve dinner and we eat. <laughs> well, I'm glad he liked the food. I really only hope that we survive the night. Because quite honestly, I only plan for one day. So I don't want to have to try and survive out here with uh, no rations left. Chapter 2. The Awakening. Get up. Get up, Luke Girl. Get up. I got only to see Nathan missing in the fire extinguisher. Who the heck? Come get your friend, Luke Girl. Luke Girl is right over here. Thanks so very much, man. Really? Follow me. I don't have time for this, man. Hey, get back here! I chase after her, trying in vain to catch up to her to get her to talk. I know you're out there. Get out of the bushes. This is about a couple hours later now, and I'm just trying to gain control of the situation with my friend who was snatched without a trace. But now I'm the one. He hadn't have been stupid enough to wander off like that. This would be a non-issue. How idiotic is he? Continue to charge through the underbrush. Hoping to find him somewhere, though I'd gotten lost long ago now. The trees are thicker here, so I'm obviously deep within the woods. Hello, boy. Looking for me? She asks in the kind of voice that you 
can't easily explain. The best I can do is it has a kind of regal beauty. Physically, she looks very feral with emerald green eyes, light brown hair, tannish skin, and a shirt made of grass. I don't have time for this. Where is my friend? All I succeed in doing is getting her to laugh at how red my face is. This isn't a joke, ma'am. Where is he? I'm trying my hardest to stay calm, but I'm also failing miserably all the same time. You're very loyal, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Now, for the last time, where's my friend before I get physical? Can you believe the magic? No, of course not. Well, you should. As she finishes speaking, all I see is a whole lot of darkness over which I fall unconscious. Chapter 3, The New Beginning. Now, before I continue, I know this sounds very much uh, copyrighted, but it's not that. Spyro is copyrighted, not that title. Two different things. Ow, oh, where am I? As I lay there on the floor, I looked at the room, finding it well furnished, organized, and well tight. Question: Who am I? Well, I better find someone to answer my question. I won't find it here. Because I'm a wolf, that's it. And again, isn't that obvious with all the part? As I get up, I test the strength of my legs, making sure nothing is broken or sore. When I exit the hut, I find a kind of lady out there. If I had to describe her, it would be scaly like a serpent. With green scales, lush, long, bright pink hair, her eyes a kind of greenish color. Built as an endurance runner, what with being short and skinny. Who and where am I, ma'am? When I see her face, I see kindness, a compassion like no other. You're my home in the fort, in the deepest part of the forest. In the <laughs> well, you're a wolf named Tara. What would your name be? I cocked my head to the side, curious. My name would be June. Nice to meet you. Where's my pack? Are they okay? I see you're quite the loyal one. Yes, they're perfectly fine. They're nearby, in fact, waiting anxiously to see that you're alright. Thank you, Miss June. After the conversation, I hurry to see my pack and find them about ten tail lengths away. Thank goodness you're okay, Tara. Don't be reckless like that again. You're saving me. You're saving me. And I mean, he's whispering, but I can't really get a whisper in there very well. Thank you for saving me. Of course, Alvin. I don't want you or anyone else in the back now without trying to help. We were heading back to the witch's house to help her with defending the forest. I'm sorry you ran out here for nothing. So could you please hunt with Flare and Solar? We're low on food. Right away, Alpha. I say as we run off and search food. So, how have y'all been? I'm fine. Solar indicated that she'll speak later. You know how she is. Ha! <laughs> Don't we all? That's what I like about her. Her fierce determination to get things done right. Of course, we all did. Solar is one with the lush, beautiful golden fur and gold eyes that could capture you forever in a day and you wouldn't care. She's also pretty tall and thin, allowing for great amounts of speed. Lair is a handsome Oliver, with brown eyes. He's short and thin, but he's hard to hear. As such, he's hard to hear when sneaking up on prey. Comparatively, that is. I've gotten two rabbits running your way. Terra Solar, be ready. Got it, Flare. I nod Solar. Letting her know that I'm ready. And after a moment, she nods back and we start the hunt. By the time we finished bringing it all back with us to the pack, we brought back five rabbits, three mice, and a deer. I hope there's enough, Alpha. It's more than enough there. Outstanding job, all three. Now, in celebration of Terra being well again, no pecking order or whatever. Just dig in. Heck yeah! Everyone is really happy. It's like I had a better day. I'm with them on that one. I mean, quite honestly, you know, when you get better, and then you can be with your back again. It's quite nice. So we just ate and talked, passed out after a while. Really gonna have a better reunion. Chapter 4 Why are intruders so annoying? So someone's intruding upon our territory. We all know that we need to show them out. We all know we need to show them out. Remember, stay in hunting formations to scare them off. Don't kill them unless absolutely necessary. Anything to add, Alpha? 
I start to wag my tail, anxious to drive them out. No, I don't. That explains the situation pretty well. Now, let's go. And ends up in their, in their direction and that's following. As the Omega, I'm the head of battle strategy for the pack. We haven't lost a battle yet with me as Omega. Alpha's admitted that maybe a new leader's in order to seem to be good rallying the pack to fight as well as the fact that he's getting just a little bit old to be running, like he's uh, still 24 moons old. We soon find them. They're sent strong and almost visible. That would be a puke orange, especially the little one. Be careful of the tiny one. We don't want to harm or kill them. Just drive them out. They'll be extra protective of the tiny one. After giving the warning, I howl as loud as I possibly can, trying to scare them without revealing ourselves. They end up leaving, probably because of the tiny pup in the paws of one of the high paws. Well, that went well. And back we go. I turn around with Alpha and Beta, and we went back to the forest down the road. I'm like, could you stand for the pack, please? Beta, could you get the lizard lady so we can start the ceremony? Yes, Alpha. I just watch, shocked as Beta goes to get her. I can't believe my ears, they have to be lying. This is too good to be true. I'm going to get to protect everyone in the pack? I walk up in front of Alpha as Beta returns to the lizard lady, June. Omega, do you pledge to honor the will of our ancestors and watch over your pack? I do, Alpha. Do you pledge to support them in times of need? I do, Alpha. Well, I proclaim you to be the new Alpha or Pack. Defend them with your life. Of course, Delta. Do you have someone to proclaim as Beta, Alpha Terra? Claim Solar to be my Beta and my mate. I thank my ancestors that she hadn't gotten mated while I was in here. I wanted to always be at my side. I will not always be at her. The new Alpha, as if this one was Terra. The Beta is now Solar. May they lead this back to prosperity. As everyone starts howling, I just think of how it, how it was a very awe-inspiring experience. Yeah. Coming out and finally mating the one I love. I'll never forget it. Chapter 5. Lovers Leave the Way. After a week of hunting, we had enough food to last about a week without hunting. So we decided to just goof off <laughs> this week. Morning, Solar. You sleep well? Is your back going better? I ask, my voice caring, but not nervous. Feels so strange doing more fun than work. I don't want to overhunt me. It's best to just do this. Someone turns her eyes on me, and I can't help but look into her beautiful emerald green eyes. Just a bit, but it's nice to have some alone time with you, really. She looks at me mischievous. Mischievous. Sorry. Would you like to have a play fun? You haven't done that in moon. It'd be nice to be able to pin you again. She lunges at me, but I counter by taking out her legs and pinning her instead. You mean like that? I smile impishly myself, starting to laugh. She rolls over, pinning me instead of her, laughing on the wild. No. Like that. I roll over and roll over and get off her. You're on. Try me. We end up in a draw. Every time I pinned her, she pinned me in the opposite applied too. Every time she pinned me, I pinned her. As the sun reached its zenith, we heard a weep rustling in the bush. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. What do you think it is? I don't know, but we need to find out solely. We rush in the bushes toward the sound, find an injured wolf pup lying there, bleeding profusely. Get some cobwebs and leaves. I'll get our healer. Right. So as Solar rush, rushes off to collect the webs and leaves, I hurry back to camp to get our healer, which isn't our expert in healing. As should be obvious, but you never know. I don't know about you high paws out there. As I hurry back, thoughts of dying of blood loss crossing my mind, pushing me to run faster and faster. Upon reaching camp, I ignore the startled and panicked faces and rush to get the healer. Come with me, quickly. There's a pup who's bleeding profusely. I'm seeing the fear in your eyes, yet the great amount of control shown. Certainly a leader. Anyway, of course I will. 
He's hurt, is he not? It's my job. Show me the way, Alpha. Of course. As we hurry back, the same thought pushes me through my physical exhaustion. And when we get back, I have a hard time breathing. <laughs> After this, I collapse on the ground, simply catching wind. A few moments later, the cut ceases to bleed and he stirs a little, regaining consciousness. Thank you. In fact, told my mom and dad didn't mean left me to die. I slowly walk up to him as he starts to cry. What did they do? He's still talking. What did they do? I should have died instead of them. It's not entirely true. You're alive because you should be alive. You can pass on your story to others. Make sure that doesn't happen to others. And you can do that for a lot longer than they can. I smile reassuring. Don't resent your life. Otherwise your parents' deaths were in vain. I say this last part, staring off in the distance, recalling an event like this from my childhood. My parents packed the same thing to me. There's one thing you need to do in life. It's never stay down. Get up when you fall. I promise that no one in my pack will do that to me. But you're just gonna let me in? You don't have anywhere else you can go. After that, he thanks me and we walk back to camp. Everyone, and when we get back, everyone gathers on the pup, trying to reassure him and give him hope while I stand off in the corner, enraged at the monstrous alpha who would do that. Anyone. Chapter 6, and this is the final one today, guys. I, I mean, I'm not expecting anyone to watch, but I'm hoping, so. I have to say something. Are you starting to feel better yet, Knight? It had been a moon since we found them. But with the placement of the wound, some flower decided to take his recovery slow and steady. I pawed my way over to him. You, you feel ready to get back on your paws? You know I'm ready. It's how my body will respond that he's afraid of. He plumps back down on the bedding, deeply upset. You want to run around and play with everyone else, my age. But I can't because of the bite. The previous alpha decided to just give me. Just don't lose hope. And at this point, I'm trying to cheer him up. Hope can be the driving force behind so much hope. You lose hope, nothing good will come. Besides, I heard that you might be out, out here in at most a quarter moon. Give him a smile as I walk out of the grotto, where our healer's den is. As two of my packmates approach, winded from the one back. We have a hostile pack in the territory. I look into his eyes, find him surprisingly cool and collected, and take it as a sign to say, it just as it is, no butter. Everyone prepare for battle. I turn to the end. Come get some. This is one battle you guys have already lost. I immediately charge the alpha, clawing two more as I pass by. You really think you can just attack, and we'll passively let it happen and just do nothing? You lost what little brain cells you had left. You see, we'd fought them before. We won both battles. He just laughs as he flips me off. You're arrogant if you think you can win against these two to one odds. Take a look at your arrogance. That's why I'd snap Merlin and I show him the battlefield around us. You attack for no reason whatsoever other than simple ass pride. And then just turn it into a battle about conquest? Show him exactly how many of his compa companions are wounded compared to mine. Unlike me, your bark is worse than your bite. I sink my teeth into his throat. His warm, beating flesh, tearing against my cold, sharp teeth. This is what you get when you endanger my pack. This is the fate of those who try to hurt my family. Death. That is all that will await you. After I howl this out for all to hear, I hurry over to one of my severely wounded comrades and drag an enemy off them before the killing glow lands and kill the one who attempted to murder. Attempted to murder, simply impaling my claw. From there, the rest is a blur. Afterwards, there were 55 total casualties, only 10 of which were on our side. Only half our clan being injured, really. 
Was anyone seriously wounded? Say Flair, no. Flair can't get up on her own now. Flair's mate, Lunar, being the one to respond. However, is there anyone I cannot see? His loyalty thrust out in the open, no one. I don't think would doubt him anymore. I couldn't ignore his blade. No, I was beat to it. No, Lunar. The rest of us just need to stop the bleeding and get some sleep. Go get Flair looked at. Rain responded. Who was the one who by far doubted Lunar's loyalty the most? Yet said this without a trace of sarcasm or venom in his voice. Lunar had finally proven himself. himself and it showed plain as day. Thank you, Rain. Thank you. I don't think he'd ever been choked up like this before today. Time to get everyone rest, rest and recover, though. I don't really have time to think about that. Okay, everyone, get something to eat and go to sleep. Rest and recover. We, we sh Hopefully with this, we should be better by tomorrow. You never know, though. After this, we all dress our wounds, eat, and go to sleep for the night. Because honestly, we just need to recover. Okay, that's all for chapters 1 through 6. So, I've, I've been wanting to do something like this for a while. But I haven't been able to get around to it. And it just appeared to me that it is getting dark on my screen. So I'm going to turn up the brightness and contrast a little here for next time. And you know, hopefully next time I won't have, you know, to deal with afternoon and stuff here in Texas. But yeah, that's uh, that's all for today. Probably going to be all for about a month or two now, so... Later.